Hi, my name is Tatiana Zaitsova. Today is Wednesday, August 18th, 2021. And today we will talk about Red Earth Colors and I am assisted by George O'Hanlon, like always. He's behind the camera and he will help me during the, uh, our video. Before I will start to talk about um, serious things, <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, all of you who call us uh, daily and ask uh, us how we're doing, uh, because we do have fire season and um, um, funny enough, we always uh, answer we are good. So today, two o'clock uh, uh, morning, at, um, morning, yes, so we got uh, evacuation notice and uh, I started pack all our belongings and so by the four o'clock I was ready to leave the house but uh, we got the message then uh, the fire uh, here's local fire was uh, down so which is happy where we are so happy here today to be with you and uh, um, have this session next week i just uh, want to remind you next week on uh, august 25th george will talk about origin of color and that would be uh, that was a uh, first lecture from uh, what actually whole painting best practices started later so uh, that was uh, that lecture was ordered by national gallery and so in 2006 first time george gave that lecture these days he remodeled that that uh, lecture so specifically for the uh, for you to to view on computer it will be great one don't miss it and uh, so again it will be on painting best practices um, website so uh, please remember that it's uh, august 25th uh, 10 o'clock pacific time next week so let's start uh, talk about our red um, colors red earth colors about uh, five only five colors uh, uh, red earth and uh, that probably were ju uh, just the regional colors what we started uh, uh, 16 years ago uh, these days we have many more uh, which we will talk um, about other ones uh, later uh, on another sessions but we thought we will cover today uh, most unusual uh, in between uh, these five um, uh, colors, most unusual behavior. So first one is uh, Sartorius Red or Red Sartorius Earth. And um, um, it's, you will see that, uh, and we're specifically showing the uh, behavior uh, because this one actually almost behave like uh, uh, burnt sienna. And as transparent as uh, burnt sienna although you notice then it was pr1 of uh, uh, 102 which is uh, red iron oxide that is um, um, what we are showing now it's venetian red and you see a little bit of separation and uh, those of you who were on our uh, or shows or our uh, classes i always talk about our nari red earth colors and specifically uh, Ercolano and Venetian it's uh, two the most nutty colors <laughs> so they um, again uh, we need to mention then um, we don't put any additives to any of our colors except one and um, 
So therefore, uh, you definitely will see uh, the separation on some of them. And the most likely it would be on red, uh, red uh, earth colors. So Venetian red, um, as a mass tone, uh, you will notice then uh, three colors. It's Venetian red, Pazzoli red, and um, Ercolana red. They almost look identical as a mass tone. Once you mix with them with whites, you will see the difference and today it will be very apparent and um, and especially you will see how uh, how it's look different when you mix with titanium white because lead white of course um, very soft white so then uh, even though you will see but not as much as with titanium so you notice all of the uh, all of our colors at least first uh, three it's uh, pr102 which is red iron oxides the difference is just uh, it's different places where we dig these colors such as this uh, area in verona in fact most of the red earths um, that we're going to show come from northern italy and we put the Bunsell numbers notation there too for, for those interested in that. That is new for us. So we never did this, um, uh, but we found that interesting. You notice this, how Ercolana is very long color. So um, I know some, uh, some artists asking us, what do we mean uh, long and short color? So short, it's when you uh, just tap the color. Uh, with the knife and so it's breaking immediately that was sartorius earth it's very short battery uh, paint whereas the Irkalana is the longest one and probably the nuttiest one because and one of uh, one of our uh, absolute bestsellers uh, because of the uh, you you will see how so many uh, um, orange color that is So here we have uh, red doors from France, Le Baron Valley, and uh, you will see how long that one. Yes. It's a nice tail zip for yes. us. You also see some of the texture of these. Uh, some of these pigments have fairly good sized particles. French is one of them, and of course, uh, well, for those of you who are familiar with our colors, uh, you know then all our French colors, French Umber, French Siennas, uh, uh, have quite big particles, and so they do behave very different from all other colors. So if you want to, uh, to pay attention to the behavior of the color, so that, that would be, you know, too uh, cool to check that um, all our uh, French colors. Indian red. That is one of my uh, becoming my uh, favorites and so uh, for some reason uh, artists don't pay attention much. They probably know, uh, maybe, I don't know, but uh, uh, color Indian red from other companies and that's um, um, on our palette you will see and I specifically I will show right after when we finish video I will show you swatches this color is very interesting it does have two different particle size and um, in oil colors it's uh, quite visible in water colors it's um, uh, absolutely apparent so we do have I do believe George will uh, correct me if I'm wrong so I do believe the uh, part of that pigment is magnetite and um, magnetite is black iron oxide and that's what gives that appearance uh, of uh, very unusual so then when you paint with uh, Indian red uh, black particles are uh, staying separate from red particles and specifically when we grind that color on uh, on our um, meal you will see then first uh, uh, small particles are going first and you will see the black band and then suddenly red particles going uh, separate so this is hematite again uh, very heavy so to this uh, hematite and Indian red very heavy colors so therefore they will be very uh, very long 
and very powerful. Also very fine particle size yes. too. And this one's the uh, from the US. Blue Ridge Mountains. So. so that was with lead white. So now we will start mixing with titanium white and you will see the difference. So I'm trying to mix um, um, equal amount of white and red and uh, look how titanium overpowering immediately. And so that will give you idea how red sartorius is quite transparent color. All of them make good flesh tones though. Absolutely. You can see the pink stand out in the Venetian, especially with titanium, but it is pink even with lead. That is why for people who uh, could not afford uh, vermilion or, or just now base, nobody, none of us can, can have that color. So vermilion would be uh, very um, inexpensive. Um, far away but still substitute for uh, pink uh, pink uh, red you see the difference now that's absolutely apparent so how uh, the uh, venetian is much cooler and pinkish and her, her, her yes and the is that nice salmon yes color and pozole is standing right in between two of them somewhere Like I said about uh, French red ochre, uh, it's very interesting color uh, due to the behavior of that, uh, that color. Look now, so I'm mixing Indian red together so with titanium and uh, equal amount doesn't um, uh, give much um, tinting either so that's how powerful uh these two colors and uh, same as hematite would be if you have a uh, question so then you can ask us immediately so then we can um we can answer during the session or we just continue that, that's how i wanted to see the pink on that <laughs> on two of these colors and you can see that it took uh, some amount of titanium to to make it uh, uh visible so here i wanted um um josh you you can help me with this so kind of like make neutralize is that correct to say so we're, so we're adding of course a complementary green yeah, to, uh, in this case the Nicosia green earth so we choose two greens uh, it will be first row it will be uh, Nicosia green and uh, it's very transparent green uh, we have three uh, actually no I'm taking back again so I, I keep forgetting now uh, about our uh, Armenian uh, beautiful uh, colors so we have three earth colors uh, which is uh, Verona Nicosia and uh, Antica green so they are uh, quite transparent and two uh, uh, greens from uh, Tavush area of the Armenia which is even more transparent than uh, the first three so in this case I choose uh, cooler Nicosia and uh, you can see how uh, transparent that color is it doesn't didn't make much um, dense on that uh, uh, on that um, red colors nancy's asking uh, indian red and hematite seem quite similar besides particle what's the difference uh, I will show you uh, right after video. I will show you swatches where you will see definite uh, uh, change uh, differences. So, hematite um, uh, has smaller particles, and so it uh, and it does have gloss when uh, on on the end. So it's uh, uh, very easy to paint. Uh, the brush sliding, uh, very nice uh, texture on hematite. 
on uh, Indian reds, like I, I mentioned, it's uh, two different particle size, so that it's not as glossy as uh, hematite. And you definitely will see that uh, it's unusual. It's like one side is black and another is red. So it will be uh, here on camera, it's not uh, as visible. But I uh, thank you for that because I, I, that was discovery for me. I mean, we, we do like Indian red on, on our meal, but when, when I put them together, so it, it's, uh, it's just beautiful here. So with this chromium oxide green, which is far more opaque than the green earth, you yes. can see a huge difference immediately. You didn't see much it didn't of a dent difference. dent at all uh, yeah. on the uh, Sartorius. You can see then it's absolutely um, the gobble that uh, red. Alice uh, asks, uh, so Venetian red might be a good substitute for vermilion? Yes, that's great. So it's very inexpensive. Um, very easy to uh, to work because it's uh, not as powerful. Um, so yes, it's, it's a good substitute, but it, it won't get you the bright red that vermilion does. But yes. in the tints, it, it's very it has some similarities. So it might make a good substitute there. Yeah. Um, Susie asks, I know we're talking about oil paints, but yes. do the same mixing characteristics apply when mixing the pigments in egg tempera? To some degree, uh, to, yes. yes. So yes, and but again, not quite as yeah. saturated, yes, or a, as as dark. You're going to see a much lighter color. Yes, that's true. And as as tempera uh, is uh, anyway, but uh, you probably will not see much difference. Um, and I, I I must be honest about like uh, Pazoli and Nercolana. If you will do this in uh, watercolors or on uh, tempera, probably will not be much difference at all. Uh, Venetian will be uh, obviously visible and it's uh, quite cooler. And um, uh, and of course, uh, with uh, I I encourage you to try Indian red. That that is one unusual color. Very powerful again. If uh, uh, it will not be uh, good for uh, maybe for glazes, because again it pro will be probably unpredictable. Uh, because where you, if you would want to any um, warm warmth from that, you will not achieve that because it's uh, once you dilute in it, it will be quite cool. So I tried to do a little bit more um, red on that, so to see how to make that neutral. And um, so you, you see then again, it took um, a lot of red to, uh, to mix with, um, the chromium. with chromium green oxide. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see the first color, the Sartorius, not very not yeah. strong tinting, yes. but it's, it's really good for those color modulations that are very Long this time, Sartorius, we were selling as a um, flush tone uh, color because uh, especially with uh, Antica, Sartorius and Antica, so uh, two of them you can have and you can basically mix any uh, flush tone. Um, so here, of course, <laughs> instead of red, I should bring a little bit more green, but I did that. I got uh, excited, I guess, uh, too much. So um, we are back now to camera. And um, so there's that- a There's a question from Robert. It says, are there any issues with mixing earth colors with cadmiums? Uh, he says he seems to remember one of the painting materials book mentioning earth colors would eat, perhaps not the correct term, the cadmiums. And if anything, then I would think probably opposite because uh, yeah. all uh, earth colors are so weak uh, tinting. So then cadmiums will definitely overpower. overpower. Uh, so same like what you saw with cadmium, I mean, with uh, uh, chrome oxide green. So that I think he was also referring to uh, any degradation of cadmiums. And uh, you have to keep in mind that um, sulf, it's... Uh, what they're really talking about are sulfide colors and particularly colors that have free sulfur or uh, free sulfur uh, compounds in it. 
And, um, but that's not the case with, um, uh, with earth colors and with cad cadmiums. Cadmiums are rather pure these days, so they don't uh, interact with uh, uh, most other pigments uh, to date that we know. Uh, and, I, and, and I don't think they ever did with, uh, with any of the iron oxide or earth colors. Um, there's another, another question. Uh, this person, in fact, 19, uh, they purchased, uh, this person purchased uh, Pozzoli red ochre. Yes. And seemed to have some separation. Should he add body oiler or wax? Ooh, Is, um, are you talking about the pigment? Um, so the, I, the graininess he's asking, he says that the, the biggest issue is the graininess. The graininess is actually the particle size. So there is some separation and, and Tanya can speak to that yes, too. Yes. Um, you know, you probably noticed that, uh, <clears throat> new photographs on our website. And so, um, Leslie now, uh, last couple months were, uh, she was working on uh, all our photographs and uh, so we hope to, to change uh, everything on our website and so then you notice the videos we will have videos there too and so we we don't shy to, to show you because some of that colors even like on today on video you saw they have separation and if you keep uh, uh, keep like uh, uh, tubes are upside down so then oil will go up and it's just simple physics so uh, in our case, we always say then less you mix with uh, with colors, uh, uh, like any additives, meaning like wax. So better you uh, you in the future. So I if if pozole, like I said, we have this pozole and ercolana, two nutty colors. What separates um, uh, sometimes very good. Sometimes they could uh, separate, and it depend I, I guess on. I don't think it's even in batch. It's just how we tube it, and so it's everything done by hand. Um, so if that oil you didn't need, if you think then consistency of the color is not good enough for you, so then just leave that oil alone. So whatever separates, just uh, just you know throw away. If you think then it's uh, the the pigment started to be too too thick for you. So uh, add any linseed oil what you have in your studio. So uh, I would stay away from uh, body oil uh, unless you will paint immediately. Uh, if you do want to completely retube, so take out again. We we teach you in the class. So if you take uh, um, the uh, back of the tube, so like you you cut back back of the tube, take out everything from the uh, from the tube and mix with uh, whatever oil you need and uh, put back in a uh, new tube. So um, I, again, this, I, I would it, suggest fact, do not mix with, uh, with body oil yeah. because it will be um, more difficult to paint on the, on the future. So in fact, was talking about uh, uh, making uh, their own. Uh, their own, okay. Yeah, for the I pigment and, and yes, you can add wax to it, but uh, you know, separation is not a big, it's, it's an inconvenience, but it's not a big problem. And it certainly isn't a defect in the paint or in the paint you make. So, um, and remember, uh, we, we always love here in the, you know, at, uh, at class. So we love you to make your own colors. Absolutely. Don't be surprised then a couple months uh, later in YouTube uh, separation will occur because we don't have, I mean, as a human, we don't have enough power to, to um, make the paint, um, um, uh, what the word I'm looking, so the um, mix enough. So, so you're talking about dispersing. Dispersing. Thank so, you. So, Thank in, you. so obviously, uh, the paint we make is is better dispersed. Uh, but if you make your own paint, you you uh, you won't be able to disperse it quite as well. But again, that's that's not a big de deal. You're going to have more aggregates, that will cause a little bit more separation. Uh, and larger particles tend to separate more than. Very fine but particles. they are fun to paint. But that's they, that's for sure. It will be much more fun to to paint with bigger particles because the behavior of uh, of the 
uh, paint will be dictated by the particles. In fact, that's what I'm going to be talking about next week in Origins of Colors. Yes. And uh, we'll be talking about how the old masters used mineral pigments, and a lot of them had very large particles in them. So, George, uh, can I can we switch uh, camera for a second? I I I dime to show that um, uh, the Indian red, and uh, I will try to. You see that band right here? That's what I was talking about. The uh, magnetite, so or smaller particles, which are they uh, quite dark and uh, darker. So when you paint, you don't see that. Um, so. You, you, I, I hope it's uh, visible. Yes, so, so the yeah, dark it looks like a kind of a grayish yes. area. Yes, yeah, and actually on uh, uh, right here, it's uh, it's much more uh, violet. That's what that's what the color here. So on camera, probably you see as a gray. So, and uh, and you can see how it's tinting uh, to the very pink one. Beautiful, beautiful pink one. So, and here, since we are talking about uh, difference in uh, uh, Indian and uh, hematite, so if if I will show, you see how glossy that is? That is uh, due to the small particles. And so therefore, uh, it's uh, look a little bit different. And, uh, uh, but again, makes a very pink uh, pink color tint so and you can see that uh, indian red is not glossy at all so this so it tends to dry matte yes yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so other colors and that, that's typical by the way of colors that have very big particle size they tend to dry matte yes and colors that have very small particle size tend to dry, uh, dry a little bit more glossy. And here, uh, here we see uh, that is the uh, Venetian, re uh, Venetian red. Here is Pozzoli. And you see how Samini uh, Ercolana is. It's uh, like uh, I always say that it is one of the... And look how different look, uh, looks Sartorius Earth. So very brown color. Although again, it's among our red earth colors. So there was yeah. uh, Naomi had a question. Yes. My lead white has stiffened in the tube. Can I mix it with more walnut oil and retube it? Absolutely. So you can change uh, switch again unless it will be more uh, more questions uh, about uh, swatches. Absolutely, Naomi. Uh, and. Um, uh, mixing with walnut oil is uh, is good. Uh, remember, if uh, if you mix with walnut oil, it uh, you will uh, prolong the time of uh, of the drying. So if you don't want to uh, to have longer time, so because our like for example our lead white number one dries much faster than number two, because of the, due to the different oils. So then yes, absolutely. And uh, Marie asks, uh, I know artists wonder about the different colors having the same color index yes. number. Yes. So remember, she's asking yeah. for a short explanation. <laughs> okay. So uh, remember, we are not talking about Mansell or about Pantone uh, system. We are talking about um, um, color index. So, and that is due to the mineral. And so since it's a uh, same mineral uh, shared by all our red colors, which we are digging and it's the mineral is uh, hematite. So, uh, but in, in like, in, let's say in uh, France, uh, French red ochre, we have more silica. So it's behave different. Um, so like, for example, in, um, in uh, Pazoli and uh, Ercolano, we have more clay. So, like in Sartorius, we have even more clay and chalk and all other minerals, but the main mi mineral is hematite, which is red, red iron oxide, and that's why all of them have the same uh, index, PR102. Same including, like, even if I, I said that uh, red Sartorius does look like uh, French Sienna, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, burnt Sienna, so... But uh, burn sienna, it's uh, uh, P, uh, PBR7. Uh, it's, it's actually P, PR102 now. Um, 
So they've standardized on that. That was long yeah. time. So, so going back some, and forth, for, we still have in the website. Yeah. So then you can, mm -hmm. uh, you can there's question a, there's that. An, uh, there's an article on the website where we, we clarify that because it, 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 uh, it did have a different number, but now it's been classified as a PR 102. And so basically the color index is a chemical designation. So, but, and chemicals can have a, a variety of colors. So that's why, um, that's why you have the PR-102. And by the way, synthetic red iron oxides are? PR-103. 101. 101, I'm sorry, 101. <laughs> so first time ever, I, you get me. <laughs> we always uh, love uh, George every time switching and I'm correcting him today. He corrected me, great. So 101, yes. And Emily asks, where can you order in the USA these colors? <laughs> uh, in our website. And by the way, thank you for reminding me. So uh, we just created yesterday a special page just for uh, this uh, seven colors. What we, we have seven, I think, yes, seven colors we had. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you will buy three, any of these colors, uh, for to the month of the August, you will automatically have a, a percentage off, but that must be specifically from that page and it will be uh, red earth colors um, the, as, a, as a product. And so then you can choose uh, any of you want. So, so they can either search for red earth colors or I will post the uh, link uh, today in the, yes. on the page uh, yes. so, so you can access it from there. So uh, just because we had such a big response uh, from you guys about uh, our white colors and so white colors were done last year and for my embarrassment, the, the, uh, that was the first uh, program we made and now year later we understand how we want that program to look like, the format, how we want to explain to you every color. So we will reshoot our white colors for September. So that would be our AMA uh, for September. We will uh, concentrate on uh, not on all uh, what we did on uh, our first uh, program, but on major white colors. And we will show you mixes with uh, different um, uh, different colors and so I do want you to write to us what specifically you wanted because I know that we collected a lot of questions but since you now know what the program would be just write to us say what exactly you want to see and because we are filming uh, we will start film this weekend to the, the September <laughs> so nowadays with all our fires we, <laughs> we never know how long we will be here in studio uh, so uh, we are starting immediately. So, so um, yeah, there's um, naturalpigments.com. Yeah. Uh, so that's where you go in and you buy all our colors. In fact, it has another question. Yes. Um, so PR 102 natural hematite based pigment from various sources at yes. various levels of purity. Correct. Yes. Yes, basically PR-102 designates a natural iron oxide, which may or may not be hemat hematite mineral. Uh, usually it is, but uh, it could be another type of iron oxide in a mineral form. Uh, and, and yes, the different colors are a result of purity. It's not, uh, it's not an alteration, but it's how it comes out of the earth. And Jose asks, is there a particular reason some colors are designated as ochres? And, uh, and, I the, think and the basic, if I, if yes, you don't mind me yes, answering absolutely, that one. yes. Um, the basic reason is that ochres are usually have a lower iron oxide content than, let's say, uh, some natural like Indian red, which has an iron oxide content that's quite high. Usually, ochres are down in the twenty to forty percent range. That's how much iron oxide they have. And everything else is uh, all other minerals, like I said. Uh, so, again, all that information on our website, you absolutely, you know, um, if you are that interested, so you can read that uh, there. So uh, that's why Red Sartorius is, uh, again, it's count as the ochre, uh, because it does have all other minerals together. And so uh, more than... Uh, 
more than even uh, like let's say uh, Venetian and of course in uh, Indian red it's almost not exist. So just about all the colors we showed you except for the Indian red and the hematite would be considered ochres. Yeah ochres. and that's why you again um, whoever uh, if you are interested so it's why we don't give uh, fancy schmancy fancy names we are giving names from the uh, from the uh, regions where we dig in and um, so that's why uh, it's um, uh, Ercolana although we pronounce Ercolana it's from actually Hercule Hercule is how you so like because I'm mixing now Russian and uh, and uh, uh, English and uh, it's supposed to pronounce actually Her Hercules and uh, so but we gave her Kalana so Pazzoli of course from Pazzoli and uh, and therefore so okay and um, let me see here we have another question uh, of course there's questions about the lead white availability yes. of larger tubes <laughs> um, we do know so uh yes i know it was a scary moment and i i know every time uh we tell you when you call us we tell you please don't uh, buy in advance because we will have that um, uh, that pigment or whatever the product You're talking and about the normal large i, tubes I know of, yeah. i know mm -hmm. so um that's why um we we got scared for a moment then we could not find the lead what we wanted and you know then george always checking uh, uh, specific particles, uh, uh, particle size and, and behavior of the color. So we finally found um, uh, it was shortage uh, this year only because of the corona, nothing else. It was nothing like suddenly uh, companies stopped doing, although probably eventually will. So, but, um, so we will have lead pigment back in uh, like uh, in our uh, facility uh, end of the months so it will take probably two to three weeks to make it so then we definitely will have a tubes um, of big tubes of lead white uh, on website by the the time what we will have next AMA for the you know for the whites so it's um, it's it's there it's coming already we know we know it's the pigment on the way yes Susan asks, will the swatches be available on your website? They are. They're there. Uh, and actually, this is my swatches, what I was doing because I'm stingy. I'm just like, I don't want to throw away anything because I was working on these colors and I, I wanted to, because uh, we check in afterwards uh, every uh, color we put on sun, we see how it's behave and so then uh, light fastness. And so that's why I'm doing my swatches. But on the website, we have professional ones. And so then, yes, you definitely will see there. Dean asks, uh, are, will this be available on the Canadian website? Oh, you mean discount? <laughs> yes, um, we can, we'll do that. Okay, Dina. So you see Dean, how it Dean. was, Dean, okay. Dean, yeah. So then how easy it was to convince George. So we didn't think yesterday about this, but so I guess he's doing that. Yeah, give us uh, just a little, uh, this afternoon, you'll see it available on that website too. Um, the He's also asking about the varnishes. Uh, not var varnish is not, not yet. yet. Not um, yet. We are working hard, and so we we thought we almost. Although um, the next we, it, it next, probably will be with the next shipment. Uh, because yeah. look like we are sending uh, not by air but by uh, uh, by land, ground. and so th yeah, ground. So then um, I, I think it, it is not in Europe. We uh, we are sending today a uh, new pilot to Europe without varnishes and we were uh, really really hoping that it will be uh, but no linda asks uh do you have stacked lead white we do um it's will. uh it's on the <laughs> yes and um the announcement will be uh sent first to our cohorts first and uh, to people who uh, was waiting uh, on the our uh, waiting list for almost a year 
It's uh, on production, that's for sure. It's not like before we were talking about, uh, it was, uh, we could not work on pigment even. We, we were short on uh, on labor because of the, you know, COVID and we could not put any of our employees to, to that task. Now it's done. And um, I, I think it will be approximately again to the time or when it will be uh, next AMA. I don't think we will announce to the whole world until we uh, we announce to, to people who waited for that. So if you are not on the list, sneakily call to Kira in the office and so she will put you in the list and so you will know first. Okay, we have some suggestions for our uh, a paler shade of white. Um, that, so. Okay. So that will we'll, we'll take those into consideration there. Okay. And I um, want to thank everybody for supporting us by buying our products. Thank and you. Thank you for like that. Thank uh, you. One more question here from mm -hmm. Jose. Which will be the closest natural alternative to transparent red iron oxide? That would be Indian red. That's it's, except it's it's not as transparent. That's the, uh, that's Mars, the point. Uh, Mars is not transparent. Mars is quite powerful. Did I misunderstand? The your... transparent red iron oxide. Oh, transparent red iron oxide. Mm -hmm. Ooh. They're, they're, uh, they're not, no. Yeah, Jose, no. the problem is, is that uh, the reason why the, the red iron oxides are trans, those red iron oxides or iron oxides are transparent is because they, they have very, very fine particles and as the particles get very small, uh, it, it does have a lot of transparency. There isn't, uh, some of the ochres can mimic uh, some of that, but not quite the same. See, when you paint with uh, I, uh, transparent uh, uh, red or yellow uh, iron oxides, they, uh, when you paint very, uh, very thinly, and you can see the, the passage is very thin, with uh, any of our red colors, red, red earth, you will see the particles. So that's the difference. And so you can easily achieve the, the transparency, but it will be different look. So it's, um, that's why we have red iron oxides. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a unique uh, pigment. It is. And, it is. Um, and uh, without, uh, also without the additive, it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, we've seen some differences comparing it uh, to uh, other other brands with uh, with additives in them yes and um, so I I thank you for all your support uh, like what George said buying uh, our products I thank you really personal so because you guys call us and constantly ask us about the fires and uh, we are just stepping. Although our fire um, season started this year in May, which was unusual. Last year we were complaining about June. <clears throat> so um, we just, but in reality it's September, uh, so August, September, and October. So we'll cross our fingers and um, and we definitely will keep you updated. Uh, George is very good at, about this. Last year he uh, he posted everything on uh, Facebook. Uh, we had whole week of uh, out of work because we didn't have any electricity and um, so we're scared it's, it's what we get for living in northern california <laughs> yeah we live in heaven except for three months <laughs> uh, one when linda had a question about yes. uh, brown transparent brown iron oxide yes and um we don't make one um but uh, some companies call their red iron oxide a brown iron oxide. So um, because it doesn't look like red uh, exactly, same like yellow. Uh, so when um, uh, I remember first we started make it, and it was like Jesus, they all re they all brown. They don't even look like red or yellow. But so, but, uh, so when, when in they're industry they transparent. Go they they look very reddish yeah. or very yellow. Very yeah. Yellow. Yeah. We do have uh, uh, Mars Brown, very unusual one, um, and uh, uh, beautiful color, uh, not transparent at all. Uh, you can make it transparent, 
but again remember we don't suggest a lot of oil so and these colors do take a lot of oil due to the particle size and just as a reminder because uh, we're getting several questions about the discount yes um, so just search for red earth colors that would be page on the it'll website be, it'll be a page um, where you will have exactly this um, you know seven colors and you can choose three of them at least so then you will have a discount and so yes and um, and um, and I will also post the link uh, in the comments after the broadcast yes and um, one uh, one question from Ivy uh, can I make any of your products into acrylic paints yes absolutely you the, can the, do the pigments pigments. Yeah. pigments so we have that's why see on our website we have sep separation groups so like pigments uh, although it's uh, you know like oils when you you cho uh, cho choose the uh, medium we don't make uh, obviously acrylics so that's why we didn't even put as a medium but you can take uh, any uh, pigments from tempera um, uh, section and just uh, uh, just go to tempera choose the pigments and any pigments uh, what you are interested would work with uh, with acrylics you can make uh, your own colors beautiful ones too so we uh, uh, we did this uh, especially on a on couple of the shows so yes you can mix with any medium you uh, um, uh, ta probably take like gel medium would be easier to uh, to mix it uh, Jose asks uh, we didn't talk about our transparent mummy that's why um, that would be special program where we will talk about only about our um, uh, Armenian. Armenian colors we do want to have this special program because this is beautiful uh, we, ha we do have uh, 10 beautiful Armenian colors and just by secret I will tell you so we uh, we found another three unbelievable colors so uh one would be uh green uh green umber absolutely green that that uh it's actually four will be one will be uh violet gray and two pink colors they actually they uh the as a pig as a pigment they look uh, uh orangey but once you make the them in um in oil they're quite pink so that would be uh i think it, that project will be done to the end of the year but we definitely will cover our uh, mummies because we do have transparent mummy and we have um, uh, brown mummy which is they are on completely different spectrum uh same like what uh if uh, transparent mummy it's uh if if i will take like venetian red how transparent it is and uh, uh brown mummy as powerful as the Indian red. That's uh, that's how uh, the range of these colors. Yes, we will talk about that. Next and by time. the way, if uh, if you if if you see that the red earth colors are out of stock on that page, uh, don't worry. We are changing that. I'm going to try to change that as we speak. I guess we missed something. <laughs> no, it it uh, it flipped over last night. Uh, okay. So okay. it uh, so we just had to update it again this morning, okay. but uh, which I, I will do uh, uh, as we speak here. You're fast, guys. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Take opportunity. So we, you know, then we don't have discounts usually. So it's uh, the only way for us to kind of like to promote and show you uh, our colors. That's when we have this AMA, and uh, not always, but we are giving you discounts. So that that would be great opportunity to try are we done for today uh yes okay oh uh one last question from okay. ivy what what's a mummy <laughs> uh, mommy uh it's uh, it's not how uh people want to think although it was uh on 19th century it was the color where mummies were um you know discovered and so then it's literally was brown color where we took our name because in, uh, it's uh, from Russian uh, because it's uh, it, and again it's called mumia and mumia that that is the uh, mineral and that's why uh, uh, we we choose that name because again if you know 
a little bit of the story of our company. That's why we started called Natural Pigments. 17 years ago, uh, we brought 13 pigments from Russia. And um, so, obviously. And uh, so then I still pronounce many of the, the uh, minerals as, as I was pronouncing in, in Russian. And so, and that's why we left uh, Mumia as a, as a mummy, we translated in English. And so this is the mineral. And uh, it's um, again, uh, for now, since we are not covering today, you can just look on our website and um, uh, it's on, you can just uh, search uh, mommy and uh, it will pop up for you pigments and uh, the oil colors. Okay. That's think... about it. Thank you very much. Oh, one, was... one, one last, sorry, one last. Well, okay, uh... <laughs> that's good. We're here, let's since, do it. Since this is an important topic, yes. when will Vermilion be available? And unfortunately, uh, we don't have a date at this point in time because the source, the only source of vermilion pigment at this point is, uh, um, it was from China. They've stopped producing. We're investigating whether we can do it. I mean, we've done it in small batches, but we're going to try to do this uh, um, with, uh, with our own process. It may take some time, though. It's so interesting. Um, I remember time. Uh, I mean, this was the most expensive color on our palette. That was one hundred twenty-nine uh, dollars a tube, and every time I remember when it was ninety-nine dollars, and I, uh, you know, in our classes, we will, I will say, then this is most expensive. Don't buy if you don't think then you will use it. And people were like, oh, so and. Um, now it's hand, uh, and I every time saying it was our bestseller and people could not believe until they try. <sighs> now we don't have it, and um, I, and I know uh, you some of you call and say like we will pay any money just give us this color and I. However, we do have a good substitute, and we will have a good substitute <gasps> soon. Don't say anything now. <laughs> it will be big we'll announcement. Make an announcement. <laughs> so we do have sub sub substitute for uh, for vermilion. It's and actually the natural counterpart. My husband vermilion. can't keep a secret, you know. He can't. So the <laughs> <laughs> he's just so excited. We are talking about year again about this color, but uh, again, it's already on production, so it will be ready at some time. <laughs> uh, and one last question uh, about lapis. Uh, that would be available next week. Yep. I I do believe it's uh, it's ready to um, to um, last grind. So we will uh, grind if not this week, maybe uh, early uh, next week, and be tubing immediately. And so and as soon as it will be ready. We definitely will uh, have a big announcement on the website, so uh, keep that in mind. So, but uh, by the end of the August, that definitely Lajurite will be back in stock. Yes. All right. Okay. Now for sure, bye. And uh, don't forget next week, uh, George's uh, Origin of Colors will be here. And um, remember then you can see online free the first uh, first day and then uh, then it will be paid uh, course in um, in painting best practices website please go ahead register with us on painting best practices uh, website see what we have there we already developing community there it's more than 2000 people already there and so slowly we will switch from facebook group to the uh, group on painting best practices where uh, serious people will have uh, serious answers on their questions uh, uh, because Facebook becoming tiring. But we're still doing that. And so please register uh, uh, there on painting best practices. We would love to see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Bye now. Bye.